goes out. There's more to this than just the door of salvation. You're not, you're not saved to say you're saved and go to heaven. There's a second gospel that you're about to hear a lot of around here. God is a... You might well write this on your diary or whatever you want to write it on. Today's day, I am being transformed today. I begin my next, I begin my paradigm shift today. 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 My paradigm shift in the kingdom starts today. How many of you know you're saved? You know you're going to heaven. I don't care how you're living. You know you're going to heaven because the blood don't pay. The blood don't pay for you. So why do we have to still rally around the gospel of salvation for 20 years? But there's another gospel. It's all part of the book. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Jesus said that the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached before the end comes. All nations are going to hear the gospel of the kingdom. Not the gospel of salvation. The gospel of the kingdom is what's holding up Jesus' return is the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. And let me tell you what the gospel of salvation will do. Get people saved. Try to get them to live right. Get them to judge themselves. But the gospel of the kingdom will give you power. Y'all don't want to hear me up in here. Y'all don't want to hear me up. I say to give you power. Not to sit on that pew. You don't need no power to sit right there. It'll give you power to go out that door and move like you are net thrown by God in the sea of souls. Y'all better hear me up in here. The gospel of the kingdom. You can, I wouldn't miss a service around here right now. It's about to be some impartations. It's about to be some gifts released. It's about to be some assignments given. It's about to be some miracles happen. Not at this altar all the time. Under your hand. Y'all better hear me up in here. Under your hand. Listen, 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 listen. This gospel of the kingdom, I, I can't even get this out. This is just an introduction. This is just an introduction. Let me tell you what the Lord told me this morning. We're getting ready to shift with some folks sitting there. This next generation needs to be up here closer to the front. The, 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 the kids, the, the, the kids. Because see, some of us old dogs, we ain't going to get it. I'm just going to tell you, some of us just ain't going to want to change, ain't going to want to go. But see, Jesus said, if, 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 if you don't become as a little child, what will a child do? If a child see you casting out devils, somebody act like they got a devil, you know what that child going to do? Come out! Good God Almighty, y'all. Come out in Jesus' name. That child don't have no fear. That child going to do what he see being done. You can give any of these kids a mic up in here right now. They've been seeing us preaching. They don't know what to do. Praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? They see it. You got kids at your house right now. Say you got a headache. They're going to lay hands on you. Why? They're exposed to the gospel of the kingdom. They know God's a healer. God's, a, God's got power. But some of us, but not none of y'all, the people in church who rallying around the gospel of salvation for 20 years, they're just trying to stay saved. Things have shifted. I don't know if y'all... Things have shifted. This gospel of the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 4.20 and I'm closing. You know what we experienced this morning? You know what Jesus said? The Bible says Jesus went. He started his ministry saying this. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know what we did this morning? Before we even started the service, we repented and we said the kingdom of God is at hand. We received the kingdom of God. You saw the difference that happened in here this morning? We repent. See, we repented and we expected, we received, we entered into, we went after the kingdom of God. And when the kingdom of God comes on the scene, God's power, God's rule comes on the scene and devils and situations and circumstances have to bow to that name. Let me give you one more little bit, tidbit. Wherever you go, the kingdom going to go with you. 
We're going to show you. We're going to teach you how to carry it. My God, I, I, I was almost gone. We're going to teach you how to carry the kingdom. We, we ain't gonna, we, we're not, see, salvation, the gospel of salvation teach you how to call the preacher. Y'all, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. The gospel of salvation teach you how to call the preacher. The gospel of salvation will teach you how to pray, God do it. But the gospel of the kingdom. I've given you power and authority. You tread over serpents and scorpions, over all the power. Of you cast out devils. You speak with new tongues. You lay hands on the sick and they recover. Not the preacher. Y'all, I don't want to get. I don't want to get too deep in this. I won't take it too fast. I won't take it too fast. But if if y'all can stick with us six months, you don't, you don't even know. Who, boy, you you ooh, you talk about Clark Kent. You be running in phone boots all over Baton Rouge, coming out Supergirl, Superman. Some of you are going to be moving so deep and so hard and so strong, you don't even have time to put on your Clark Kent clothes. You're going to be Superman, Superwoman at the job. Superman, Superwoman in the office. On a telephone, talking to your relative. The glory and power of God going through the phone, healing them. All of a sudden, you're talking to them about Jesus. You hear the phone drop. They're out. God giving them an overhaul. Changing their lives right there over the phone. I'm telling you, shift has come to your life. I wish I could just download it all into you right now, but we can't because we don't want to choke you. But I'm trying to give you just a little taste of what God has for you. 1 Corinthians 4.20. I'm closing. You can get me some music. 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Well, that's all the time we have for today. You can order today's program in its entirety by calling the office at 225-274-3804. Pastor Virginia and I would like to invite you to our services, Sundays at 1030 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We are located at 12330 Florida Boulevard, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, next to All Star Nissan. Also visit our website at www.ffhm.net where you can get to know us better, watch live and archive services, and stay informed concerning upcoming events. If these programs have helped you, help us help others by sowing an offering at the website. This is Pastor Thomas saying, allow God's word to transform you from a spectator into a participator. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Here are the ways that you can view Life Television Network. You can now view Life Television Network on the new WGOX TV 43 by simply going to your local retail store, purchasing an antenna, and connecting it to your TV monitor. Life Television Network now has its own app. You can install the app by simply going to the App Store in your mobile device and typing in Life Television Network in the search bar. The app is also available in the iTunes Store for those with an iPhone. You can also view us on the Roku Streaming Player by going to the Channel Store and searching for Life Television Network in the Religious category. And you can also view us on our website at www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also stream Life Television Network live on YouTube by simply searching for Word of Life TV Network in the search bar. Apple TV, Google TV, and Smart TV are other ways that you can view Life Television. Simply go to your app store on your Google device, your Apple device, or any smart device and install iPoint Global, and there you will find Life Television Network. You can also listen to Life Radio Network by going to TuneIn.com and searching for Life Radio Network. And there you will find our station. You can also tune in to Life Radio Network on our website, which is www.wordoflifetv.org, and click on the page radio. For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can also tune in to Life Radio Network by simply going to 87.9 FM. We here at Life Television Network and Life Radio Network thank you for your continued support. Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. 
Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652. Now here we're generations later still dealing with the same spirits that they dealt with in times of slavery. So most of the demons that we deal with in our community and even in our society are still spirits that have attached themselves to us and have us still thinking like we slaves instead of free men. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, very interesting scripture. You, you Sometimes in your own time, private, quiet time, you need to get it. Read that whole section. Because it, it talks about the heart of the Father. Everybody say, God is our Father. Come on, one more time. God is our Father. And a Father only has the best interest for his children at heart. One more time. The Father only has the best interest for his children at heart. All right, now let's read uh, together what I say, verses 15 through 20. Ready? Re for though we have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have... Wherefore I beseech you, come on, read. My beloved son, and faithful in the Lord. Hmm. Amen. We're going to finish it. What will ye? Shall with a rod or in love or in the spirit of meekness? Well, see what was going on. You know, sometimes people get to rebelling. And Paul had heard some things they probably had been saying out there. And Paul said, I ain't scared of none of y'all. And uh, I'm going to be on the way to see you. <laughs> and uh, we'll discuss those things that you want to talk about when I get with you face to face. Amen. But prior to that, this scripture begins to deal with the heart of the Father. Fight, write these six things down, then we're going to try to review them according to scripture. First of all, there's a difference between the anointing of an instructor and the anointing of a father. First of all, there is a difference between the anointing of an instructor and of the father. It's a difference. Number two. Everyone does not have a father's heart. 
Everyone does not have a father's heart. Number three, recognize that the father or a father gives birth to things. I like to say it like this, real men make things happen. Fathers give birth to things. Number four, recognize that a father leads by example. A father leads by example. Number five, the father will assign our caregivers that keep you in remembrance of your inheritance. The father assigns caregivers that will keep you in remembrance of your inheritance. Then number six, fathers teach us how to follow God. See, we have to remember one thing about it. We serve the God of Abraham. Come on, y'all, help me finish it. And who? So he was the God of who? Our fathers. So the Bible starts talking about he's the God of our fathers. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. See, so if, you, if you, you've been raised, uh, and, 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 and it's, a, it's somewhat of a sad thing in times that not every father is at home. So when I get on my first point here, I just want to do it like this. It says there's a difference between the anointing of an instructor and, and, and a father. Well, number one, he says, look at verse 15. He says, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet ye have not many fathers. For in Jesus... Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So we understand, first of all, that there's a difference between an, an, an instructor's anointing and a father's anointing. Amen. Well, in, in our society, it's gotten so broken down, and, and, and I'm going to just deal with it. Just One day I was praying and talking to God uh, about some things and, and dealing with the family. And God told me like this. He said, a lot of people, because of absentee fathers, they have been leaning to the elder brother's anointing. Now y'all stay with me. What I mean by that, if you lived in a household and your father was gone and you had other siblings, generally the oldest brother became more of your leader, your guide, your teacher. Sometimes it wasn't no daddy that taught you how to tie your shoes, it was your big brother. Sometimes it wasn't your daddy that taught you how to ride a bicycle. Big brother, uncle. Now, the only difference between that is your sibling really does not know too much more than you. Amen. Amen. That's right. So what we have been doing when we receive from that, even though it's kept us stable, probably kept us in some good situation, but we've just been receiving, how can I say this, horizontally and not vertically. Jesus. If I got time, go to Psalm 133. See, an anointing flows down. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't flow vertically. I mean horizontally. It flows down. So just because I taught you how to ride your bike, tie your shoes, maybe even tie your tie, sometimes Big Brother had to plat out. Right. And one of my good friends got a bunch of sisters. And they were younger than him. Their dad had died when they were young. Man, he know how to do how just as good as some of the sisters. Do twists, put borets on them. He know the difference between a plait and a braid. Come on up in here. But now he's real masculine. But because their father passed, and he was the oldest sibling, he fell in the place of what would resemble a father. But he still wasn't a father. He was just my big brother. And so if there was no father there, watch me now, I'm teaching you something, to impart to him on fatherhood, manhood, and how to really be a man. I mean, you know, a lot of his things are misconceived also. Well, y'all understand what I'm saying? So a, a elder brother, a sister's anointing is more like a teacher, an instructor. Write this down. See, fathers protect, they cover. 
they provide. And at times they give instructions, but greater than that, they give you an impartation. Your father, see a lot of times we don't know it because we come from a matriarchal society and I'm, I'm going further than I want to go today. Because of the spirit of slavery, it left us in this place. How many of y'all watch the new roots? Or the old roots? Well, let me, let me give you, tell you what happened during slavery. First, with, before we came from Africa, and I can only say we because I'm black. We were strong family ties. The father was looked at as a prince or a king. That's why they say the man is a king of his castle because he was the head of his family. So when they enslaved us, put us in chains, and I say this is carried over from the spirit of slavery, simply because once we got free, our minds were not free. And we continued to carry on like slaves. So instead of us learning how to really be committed to one family, because I was, if I was a big buck, strong, you know, now they're going to use me to breed to make other big, strong bucks to work in the field. Ain't nobody saying that. So what happened? He opened up a gateway in the spirit for a whole mongling spirit to rest on me. And instead of me being a father, because I told you a father provides, protects, covers, uh, uh, sometimes gives instruction, but more than that, he gives you an impartation. And he lets you know who you are. Because of that, now we got children everywhere. And we, because of the spirit of slavery, because you know, you never got to raise your family. That's right, that's right. Because if you watch the movie Roots, or uh, uh, what's that other one that was out before Roots that was on TV? The Underground, yeah, but this is another movie. Uh, where, <coughs> where the man, well, yeah, yeah, I just saw it. I can't even think of the name of it. Well, I like the movie too. You know, some folks don't like it. Somebody help me. 12 years of slave. Do y'all remember in 12 years of slave how even the little boys was sold off? So how about it? If, if I had a good master and he still kept me around the family, my sons never get to bond with me because by the time they get old enough and strong enough to work in the field, if master needed a little extra money, he sold you off. He sold my daughters. He sold my children. So what happens to me psychologically speaking, I never get attached to nothing. Psychologically speaking, I then start being afraid to attach myself. Now here we're generations later still dealing with the same spirits that they dealt with in times of slavery. Amen. So most of the demons that we deal with in our community and even in our society are still spirits that have attached themselves to us and have us still thinking like we slaves instead of free men. I told y'all to go somewhere. I said, look, somebody said it all flows down. Psalm 133, watch this. Ready? Read it. Everybody not reading. Faith comes out. Come on. Faith comes out. Come on, faith comes out. All right, now get on your page, get your book out. Because see, I don't want you leaving here saying the preacher said, I want you to know what the Bible said. Amen. So you can begin to understand the difference between my big brother ministering to me and when my father speaks to me. Amen. See, because if I get attached to the wrong spirit or the wrong individual, when you get this wrong with daddy, I'm going to get this wrong with daddy. See, when you raise in a family, <laughs> You know when the belt come out. If it wasn't time for you to get no whooping, best thing for you to do is get somewhere and get quiet and get out the way because you might catch some friendly fire. Ain't nobody up in here but me. They go to whooping everybody. Well, I won't just whoop you two. Just <laughs> Doc said he know about that. Belt go to hit everybody. You get on somewhere, get out the way. I remember, I, you know, I didn't have a bunch of siblings, y'all know that, but I have cousins, and a lot of times I'd be left in family situations with my paper on my mother trusted, and they would tie behind. And, 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 you know, I always personally, because I ain't like whoopings, I always had personal lines of demarcation. <laughs> like when the rest of them might go on past a certain line, I'm stopping right here. Now, my, now, I ain't gonna lie to you. My feet might be right on the edge with them. 
might even be halfway across the line. But I ain't come all the way across the line. So when they got ready to start swinging that belt, I really wasn't qualified to get in on that, if you understand what I'm saying. And so when that was happening, I called home. Me and a couple of my cousins, my cousin ran, and we called and said, hey, I'm ready to come home. Because Uncle LK ain't never finna put it down up in here. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, so, so, so you have to understand then that a father desires to cover. And he has to give you room to grow. But you can't get confused with your siblings over your parents. Now y'all, my daughters in here, women in here, you've been left in the house in charge. And when mom and daddy would leave you in charge, some of them in the house say, you ain't none of my mama. Yeah. Or if it was the big brother that was in charge, you ain't none of my daddy. Ain't nobody ain't gonna help me out today, but it's alright. But mama left you in charge. And so because now my daddy might have been in prison, he might have had four or five different families, he never spent the proper time with me, I didn't get to really know him, he never really covered me, ain't nobody going to help me, but I'm going to teach this text in the house. Guess what happens to me? Then I really don't even know how to relate to a man. That's right. Work, That's right. Not one telling me what to do. That's right. That's right. Amen. See, because my brother may tell me what to do, and I can defy him. But if my daddy tells me what to do, I can't defy him. I shouldn't defy Because if I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. See, me learning how to walk in obedience, it blesses me. So when the spirit of rebellion comes in on a young fella, a young woman, it's because the devil is trying to push you out of purpose. And nobody in the world is really your friend. Anyone that tries to take you away from God is of the devil. Anyone that points you to God, God sent them in your life. See, sometimes my brother, he'll compromise with me. See, we develop all these different fellowships so we have points of accountability as we get older. Ain't nobody in here but me. So if I get off and goofy, I got some folk I really trust that will tell me enough of the truth to know, no, you can't do that, Doc, you're wrong. But when I get involved, sometimes my brother, he might compromise with me if he don't have the right bar standing himself. He'll help me figure out a way to get my sin done instead of helping me figure out a way to get out of sin. See, because when I get involved in it, see, I, I, a long time ago, old preacher told me sin is like a snowball falling off a mountain. It starts real small. But as it rolls down the mountain, it progressively picks up more snow. So what I thought wasn't damaging, at the top, by the time it hits the end and it explodes, it messes up everything it hits. So I don't need nobody that's going to always agree with me when I'm wrong. I, yeah, you might tell me, yeah, that sounds good, but you're still wrong. Those are the type of people you need to surround yourself with. Or else you'll get at ease in Zion and think you're all right when you're all wrong. You know, the Bible talks about being turned over to a reprobate mind. Now, that's the brother or the sister that's carnal, a carnal believer. You know, the Bible talks about three times believer. I'm trying to get through. Y'all need to let me get through. You got the one that's spiritual. Then you got the other one that's natural. Say the natural man, he receives not the things of the spirit. They are foolishness unto him. Then there is the carnal man. The carnal man is when I go to church. I feel like I'm all right after Sunday Bible study. But I'm really not, really, really, really not trying to walk this thing fully out. Now, when I'm a carnal, according to the word of God, he says, I put myself at enmity with God. Now, why do I want to fight my daddy when he's trying to bless me? He says, if I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. Am I working up in here this morning? Come on, say the oil flows down. And say, if I'm going to get it right. Wow. 
Wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune into life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network and there you will find our station for those of you who are in chickasaw or the surrounding areas you can tune in to us on 87.9 fm you can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello friend, I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so there's the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need, I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you.
is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries, or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call. All you got to do is pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom, or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God, and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you, and keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. My name is Sister Mildred Williamson, and I'm a member of the Word of Life Church. Uh, Dr. Henry W. Roberts is, our, is my pastor, and I wanted to give my testimony concerning about my surgery that I had on September the 6th, 2017. I was admitted in the hospital. I came to church uh, first, and uh, Pastor Robert prayed for me. And uh, God healed me at that time, but I didn't know that I was healed. 
but God knew it. And I, and they, they, I still had my surgery to do. And um, so when I was admitted in the hospital, they uh, operated on me and they took uh, uh, a foot of my colon out. Uh, and I, and I, and God, I was so happy to, God had healed me uh, because, oh boy, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for doing it, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. I just can't hardly tell it. I'm so full, I don't know what to do because God did a miracle for me. Because the doctor, when I was laying in the hospital room, the doctor told me he was cancer. And, I, and, and my children was very upset about it. And I said, but God, but God. I said, God going to take care of this thing. I don't care what it is. I'm going to trust God. And I came back to church. And I sat on the bench. And I said, God, you're going to fix this thing for me. And God did it. God healed me. And when I had my surgery, I came out. They found no cancer in my body. I was totally healed of that condition. And I think and I praise God for God healing me. I thank and praise God for all the saints that prayed. I thank and praise God for all the people that came out. It was, it was, a uh, uh, lot of the members came out. I thank and praise God for my physician, D Dustin Franklin Smith, MD, at, at Mo Mobile Infirmary. I thank and praise God for Dr. Hannah. I thank and praise God for all the saints. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God for, for them praying for me. I thank and praise God for my pastor praying for me. I thank and praise God for the saints that came out to the hospital, bought me things, and helped me and blessed me. I thank and praise God for Sister, Sister Matthew, Sister Stallworth, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Gullet, praise God. For all them being by my side when a time I really needed somebody. Because it really looked like it was really bad, but I knew God was on my side and he was going to bring me out. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all just don't know how happy I am. I'm so happy in Jesus because I'm healed. I'm healed by his stripes. God did it for me. And I get the testimony that the day that I am healed by his stripes. All the saints of God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for praying. Thank you for my pastor. I'm asking everybody in Mobile, if you know God, if you sick and you got cancer, come out the word of life and let Pastor Robert lay hands on you so you can be healed. You can be delivered and set free, God, in the name of Jesus. Because his prayers, his prayers will answer your prayer, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now that I am here by the blood of the Lamb. Thanks for sharing your testimony. If you would like to share your testimony via video, you can meet with Brother Tony Austin here at the church to do so. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. <laughs> Hello friend, I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place, call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, 
will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, we have a place that we could be around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so that the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. moment for us here in Otacho Orphanage and uh, I'm Pastor Nashan and uh, it is lovely to be here today. Uh, the weather is very hot and uh, we're just wondering what's going to be because we're really trusting God for rain but the rain is not yet there but we know it will be there soon. Yeah, uh, this is just to tell you that these are some of the houses that we have been able to construct and uh, I just want to let you know this building this house here is called shalom in you know, the house of peace and uh, the boys are, are staying inside uh, i've done four of this kind of houses we still need to do more houses since you know we have so many kids and in each house we have uh, 12 children inside the, each house so this is just a lovely thing as we go ahead we'll be able to show you more houses. I have done four beautiful houses and uh, we need to do more houses which will be able to accommodate all the kids and that's gonna be wonderful otherwise I'm happy. In the chin house must we just take you inside you want to see kids are just too many and this is the only reason we ask you that we need more houses and as you can quickly see uh, there is a real congestion of children in this house, so we need to provide many, as many houses as we can. So this is the only reason that we ask you to start with us in prayer so that we deal with this congestion. And when we deal with the congestion, the kids are going to enjoy. So this is just beautiful. They have their nets in, in the Alisa house. This is just for girls. And we don't allow any boy to come here. We have a matron that's helping us to take care of girls, and therefore uh, we don't allow any boy to come here. Boys have their places, their houses, and girls also have their houses. Some of the kids that sleep here, and some of them, as you can see, are very, very, very young. They stay in this house. And, uh, of course, uh, there is uh, a widow who is caring for them in this house. And we're going to show you uh, their beds and mothers where they sleep. So as you can see, uh, we have been able to provide very good beds and uh, mattresses. And, uh, you know, so one kid sleep on top and the other sleep on the, uh, under, the, under the bed. We also have nets for mosquitoes so that 
This is just to prevent them from catching malaria from the mosquitoes. So at night time, they have to spread their, their nets to avoid mosquitoes. Uh, a little bit larger room here. And of course you can see the, uh, they have their boxes where they keep their things. And uh, this is also another room. So. And children are here. As, you, as I said to you, we need to provide more houses for them because they cannot fit into this single house. I'm so happy to have been called to work with kids and it's really a hard work but I feel good when I work with kids. This house is called uh, Chen House. Chen House. This is uh, a house of joy, you know. And we're thanking God because the house of grace. So we're just celebrating uh, it has been a hard work, but the Lord has given us the ability to do it through such a kind of lovely provision. And uh, I know it's going to work out good to have this kind of building that's going to contain all the children that are here. You can see the first room here, and, and this is a lovely, it's a lovely one. The kids, you know, it's like some of the kids have some, uh, that is either they're sick, something like that. But we also trust God that soon the Lord will be able to provide uh, a medical facility which will really care for these kids when they're sick. Because Otacho orphanage school is so far away from Migori town. Migori is so far away from here. And makes it very difficult when they fall sick. We cannot take them to the hospital immediately because sometimes it is, at eight, eight, it is at night and we cannot move at night when it is so dark. This is the most powerful thing that really propels us to ask you to pray with us so that we will be able to provide a medical facility within the institution. That's going to be of great help to our kids because the kids are many and we really have to make sure that we care for them. We give them food, we give them clothes, we provide for them shelter and blankets and beddings and whatever and whatever. And what we now need to do is to make sure that we come up uh, with a, 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 a strategy to provide uh, a medical care which is going to care for these kids here in Otacho. It's a serious thing and please take it serious as you continue to pray with us. And I know the Lord will always open the door because this need, God sees this need, it's a real need, it's a powerful need, and we must really make sure that we care for them medically. As you can see, mm, this, this boys here are here, and this one here is like, they don't feel good, but the weather is very hot and they need medi medication. And uh, immediately, we have to respond to that. But you see, we don't have a location for that, we don't have fun for that, uh, but we need, it is something that we have to do. It is something we need to do, so that to provide good health for the kids, because when they're in good health, they can continue with their perfect good education in their classroom down at school. And this is going to be uh, something that's going to help the kids in this, uh, I mean, orphanage, you know. So these are some of the girls that are here, maybe they can say something, if they can, anyway. Do you enjoy life here? Yes. Is it good to stay here? Yes. Oh, that's good. So maybe uh, anything they can say? My name is Christina Chin. When we are here, we are happy. We are enjoying. We are, we are happy with our education. We are going well. Nothing is bad here. Thank you. Beautiful children. So, so we, it is, it is really something that I have to continue to appeal to emphasis on that because as you see the gap, we need to provide medical situation for them. Everything is not going well, but the medical thing is really a problem because when they fall sick, it becomes terrible to, to reach to Migori. We don't have means, we don't have a vehicle, we don't have anything to help us ferry them to biggest toll in Migori. And also we don't have money to care for them medically. 
in Migori. Migori is a big town, but several kilometers away, about 20 kilometers away to Otake. So, it's message very big trust. We need medical facility, and we ask you to stand with us to pray so that the Lord will be able to provide medical facility and means of transport. We need a vehicle here that's going to help us to do our thing. So, um, just to quickly let you know that we've done some kind of wiring in the laser house and uh, all the electricity system will be tapped from a laser house to all other houses so that we will be able to provide enough light for each house that is within the, I mean, the orphanage. And this is just to let you know for sure that uh, we're trusting God for funds to tap the electricity power. It's just about a half a kilometer from the institution here, from Otacha here, uh, and that's going to need some kind of good money, which of course will help us to bring the electricity power to the institution so that the compound would be good, the houses we will provide light system in the houses and the children will enjoy. Is I put this to you, across to you so that you can stand with us in prayer for such a thing. One of our long toilet again and uh, this is another one here. It's not yet fully done but we are working on it to make sure that we have doors and the, it can begin, the guns can begin to use it from the outside and this is just a wonderful thing. And within Elisa house we We've got the store here where we keep our food and therefore as you can see this advance of food that we have here for both maize, millet and rice and beans that, uh, that the winners are preparing for the, for the children and uh, of course we have several of them but not enough so we, we still plead with you that God willing you continue to support us so that uh, I buy enough food all the time always for the children within the Otacha orphanage otherwise I'm happy I want to see a smile from your faces <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm not seeing from some of you. I want to see a smile. Hello. Yes. Do you love me the way I love you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, that is good. Now, this is another day that the Lord has made. Who has made this day? The Lord. He has made this day so that we, we be glad and rejoice in this day. Hello? Yes. Do you agree on that? Yes. Yes. So, as you can see, we have some clothes here. And these clothes are yours. Are you happy to receive them? Yes. And I know with this blessing, there are many, many other blessings coming on our way. You will work hard and hard. Are you going to work hard? Yes. Hey, how many of you are going to be number one this time? Huh? <laughs> if last time or the other test you had a marks below 200, this time round I want you to get 200 and above. You get me? Yes. 200 and above. And if you got uh, 250 last test, this time round I want you to get 300 marks. I want you to get how many marks? 300 marks. We are going to start distributing. Immediately you get yours, I want you to try it, okay? Yes, you put it on. I want to see you smart in it. Is it? Yes. yes. And you now clap your hands. If you are happy and you know, and you really want to show, if you are happy and you know, clap your hands. If you are happy and you know, smile a bit. <laughs> That's great, you know. So we are so much grateful this morning, isn't it? Yes. This one tells you what? 
as a girl child, you must come to school and learn, get education. Those who are at home right now, are they in a position of getting these ones? No. So those who sit back at home, please, when you go back during the holidays, you tell them to come. To Sharon <laughs> 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 Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, I mean, the children, they just want to begin to take their, uh, their breakfast. It is still early in the morning, however, it is too hot, and we just want to give them some kind of beautiful breakfast. This is African kind of breakfast. We call it you know, porridge or nyoka in our language. It's one of the very nutritious food so far that is really, well, I mean, you know, recommended for the kids, you know, make kids grow well, make kids, you know, become powerful and also do something in their brain. So it's a beautiful kind of meal that we really give them every morning. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's lovely to, to serve the kids and... We make the kid, you know, we're just feeding them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. We're now feeding kids so that they can... <laughs> Thank God for having been able to provide food for these children because this is just a part of the breakfast in the morning and uh, of course they also have heavy lunch which they're gonna take but I just want to thank God for speaking to your heart and making it possible to provide for the children and uh, I will continue to pray for you so that you continue to provide funds for the children which is very, very uh, needed here. We need to buy food all the time because children are so many. And of course, they are up to 130, 230. We feeding them is not very easy. The, the children grow well. The children have to receive their perfect education as they have been taught here with their teachers. Once again, we come to another very serious place, uh, a place of real work, real job that's going on. You know, this is break making. I just want to let you know that we have uh, a team of work that really help, help us with this kind of a heavy task of making. So we're now working on much more bricks to be able to provide several, I uh, mean, uh, houses. So we have to do this as soon as possible, we will be there. As you can see, these are the kind of bricks that we do because these ones are still very raw, uh, not yet ready, you know, because we have to make them, care for them, and finally fire them. So, because it is just too hot right away, makes us to uh, cut some grass. When we do cut some grass, we cover them because the sun is too hot and can break them as they dry. We need them to dry in a good conducive moisture that not going to break them badly. So we have to keep, we have to cover them uh, from the hot sun. So this is just a beautiful thing that we're doing here. So as you can see the the Makasia house is just next to the Alisa house. This is just, uh, you know, the, the, this side here is part for girls. So the boys are the other side, but this is girls' part. So we're working here. And as you can see also, our soccer ball, uh, soccer ball team for, 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 for the school here. Um, 
the Tati Budo are really enjoying. Uh, this uh, this used to be one of our perfect, you know, uh, students here, but they are here again to help us to do a lot in the school. You're happy? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need more balls, so uh, one is not going to be enough. We need several of them so that, and also, uh, we also ask you to continue to donate for us some soccer ball uniforms, you know, like you can only see them with the shirts and they don't have the, the shorts. So we're looking for, for such a, a beautiful provision for both shirts and, and, and shorts in the future. And then number 25. Number 25. Okay, it's done. For question 24 and 25, choose the organization that needs to fit the group. Number 20. Yes, Vivian. Although it was mine. Very good. So the correct answer is A. Moreover, uh, when do you use moreover? When do you use moreover? Moreover. Moreover means more over. Or in addition to, okay? In addition to. That's when you are allowed to use more. classes that one is from the ECD section to class 8 and uh, because it was the first period there was different subjects going on we have seen how pupils are very cooperative teachers are, are also committed to their work they've been working very well and in fact that's what have made us in this far Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652. Recently accident or fall and experiencing pain, we're open four days a week, some days 7.30 to 7.30. Call me at 476-PAIN. 
One call, that's all, to me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon of the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. The choice is yours. Hello, folks. Tupelo Ron here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress, and more, where we're having our year end clearance sale. Right now, we're having 60% off of our Sealy Postropedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our Southern Motion sectionals, as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress, and more, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello folks, Tupelo Ron here at Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More. We're going to do something a little different here today. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the word out on the deals that we have, the different products that we handle, the great prices. We do a lot of closeouts here. We have one of a kind and someone we'll have them three or four deep, but we carry mattresses now that we are partnered up with a company out of Nashville called Best Mattress and More then we've got like 50 mattresses on the floor. We have great prices. I, I'm going to think that we probably got one of the largest display of mattresses in the state of Alabama. And in addition to that, one of the things we have, if you buy before 2 o'clock, you can get same-day delivery. If it's after that, you can get next-day delivery. And some more of the features that we have that in 30-second spots, we never have the time to tell you is that we have free delivery here in town and we consider town like 30 miles in each direction from the store here so what that means to you is you don't have to pay a hundred 125 or whatever it is for any kind of deliveries it ain't free to us but it's free to you but I want to show you some of the deals we got in here come on follow me over here start with we handle beauty rest we got three different lines in here, and we picked these three on purpose. We carry the beauty rest. We carry all of theirs. We will sell a beauty rest probably 30% cheaper than anybody else in town. Now, we have our specialty mattresses that's by Sealy. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. But any of these things like the beauty rest, the uh, Englander Resort Collection, we're going to sell them cheaper than anybody else in town. We do it on purpose because we can do this. We're not just a mattress store, we're a furniture store also. Now, we used to be just furniture when it was Tupelo Furniture Outlet, but now we're Tupelo Furniture Best Mattress and more. We had to do that in order to get the dealership with Best Mattress. We had to give them half of our floor to display. As you can see, we've got, uh, I don't know, mattresses just displayed. So, but we also have furniture. Come on over and show you some of them. We have over here, I'm doing this for a price thing, because nowadays uh, a good night's sleep is important, but everybody's concerned about price, and they should be with the economy like it is and everything. This is the Optical by Sealy. This mattress here, these on the adjustable beds, these are the all foam, memory foam, cool gel, the works. This Optical will sell in our competitor stores when it's, it's regular $15.99. This is a twin extra long, which is half of a king bed. It takes two of them to make a king like that. Twin extra long, okay. They're gonna sell for $14.99, but when they're on sale, and by the way, I checked our competitors, they're on sale for $12.99. We sell this mattress for $5.99. Every day, every day, not a sale, no sales. It's just every day, that's the way we do it. Come on over here and show you. This is how we do it. Here's a queen, Stearns and Foster queen. We have, uh, hey, Don, excuse me, folks. Can you give me those pictures? I want, I want y'all to get this because we got plenty of time to do this. I want you to understand how we can sell them so much cheaper. Do you have those Stearns and Foster pictures? I bet I got them on my desk. Well, what it is, we have stores in Nashville, Tennessee, and we take the floor samples. And our guys will take them off the floor, put them in the plastic, put them in the truck, bring them down here. We're talking $22, $3,200 mattresses that we sell for $7.99, fully warranted. Now, if you don't mind, sometimes they'll have a scuff on them, a mark or something like that. But if you don't mind a little scuff or a mark, and we can save you a couple thousand dollars, and I'm not kidding you, come in and prove me wrong. Come in here. Let me get my, I'm going to show you what we got here. Stay with me. Thank you, sir. Here's some of the prices. You don't twenty-one sixty-nine for Stearns and Foster. Right here, twenty-nine ninety-nine Stearns and Foster. 
All right. This is what they look like. Can you see that, John? This is like what they look like when we bring them in. They're in plastic like that. We've taken them off the floor out of Nashville, showroom floor. They changed the models about ever, I don't know, about every two months. Here's one of the stores that they come out of there. Beautiful store, upscale. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, a trash place. It's beautiful. But they change the models, and then we get them, and we bring them in here like this. This is a nice series mattress. This mattress right here sells in the stores in Nashville for $2,200. Now, we don't have a queen, we have a king. Now, tomorrow, this could be a Stearns and Foster because this just happens to be one of them that came in. We sell it, $7.99, same as a queen, $7.99. Come right back over here. This mattress is a Stearns and Foster estate. Google that when you get a chance, guys. Google that and see what Stearns and Foster has, a state mattress. This mattress will sell for anywhere, depending on if it's in one of the Macy's department stores. Let me see. Here it is, $33.69. But it's a floor sample. May have a scuff. I couldn't find any scuffs, even though I was looking for some. I was hoping that it would have one, so I'd have an excuse. But nevertheless, it's $7.99 for that mattress every day, as long as we got it. Now, when we're out of this one, we'll put another one out here. Come on over. Check this out. Another state. Sold it today. Stearns and Foster. Probably a $3,000 mattress. And all you have to do is Google it. See what Stearns, Stearns and Foster sell for. This is the estate. It's the Scarborough Ultra Firm, $7.99 every day. Now, we also have cheaper mattresses. Come on back. This is the Englander collection here. This is the resort collection. These are great mattresses. We have these on sale now, we don't, we don't have a sale, but if they're going to change out the mattresses and they change out the whole collection when they do, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. They change the colors on them here. I think sometimes what they're doing is they're trying to find a fabric that's cheaper than this fabric to run these. Because nowadays, you know, the trend is save money, save money, everything's cheaper, which is not a bad idea. But when they do that, they don't give these to us, but they discount them. So if you don't mind taking one off the floor, we can save you a fortune. We'll save you 50, 60 percent. Some of these mattresses sell for as high as $3,000, $4,000. You're going to get them for like $1,800. Still a lot of money, but it's a lot of mattress, you see. Also, if you're looking for just a cheap mattress, now we don't get any cheaper than this. This one in a queen. This is an all-foam mattress in a queen, $399. We don't even want to sell a cheaper mattress than that. Now, I know you can buy them out there. As a matter of fact, some of the big box stores right here in town in Mobile, Alabama, where they have, you have to become a member to buy, and you pay your little fee, and, and then you go in and you buy. i tell you one of them they have. They sell a Serta bed. A lady was in here just the other day said, I could buy a Queen Serta for $369. I said, yes, you can. But you can't, and I'm going to say this for all the bedding stores in town, it ain't nothing like the one the big box sells is nothing like the bedding stores sell. They sell Serta. We, we have some Sertas that are floor samples. They have real mattresses. The ones in the big box, they buy so many, they tell Serta how many coils to put in to dummy it down, scale it down, so you won't have it, so they can sell cheaper than the rest of us. And I don't mind saying that because I'm sick of that big box mess where everything is cheap, 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 but it's not the same thing. It's kind of like buying online. You don't know what you're getting until it gets there. Come on over and I'll show you some of the more products that we sell. All right. Half of the store is bedding, as you can see. Give them a shot of that, John. We had to do this in order to get the deals on bedding. We never had them like we have now. We've got these Stearns and Fosters, as many as, some of them as much as $2,000 off. Now, you don't have to believe that. Come in and check us out. You will see. Now, over here. We also carry furniture. One of, the, one of the lines that we carry, and what I've started doing is we buy everything by truckloads or either containers. So we don't have the capability to change the fabric on this sofa love right here, for instance. If you want it in a different color, we don't have it, unless we just it came in on that truck. Otherwise, you're going to buy this one just like it is. It'll be on the floor. It comes off the floor, same-day delivery or the next day delivery, depending on whether it's 2 o'clock. I'll give you an example. Here's a sofa lub, 
$15.49, now it's $9.99. So I'm going to show you some features about this. Charles of London arm, key cushions, a little other detail here. Notice right here, don't go, you don't have to close, but anyway, under under here, this cushion is reversible, not cheap furniture, and it's not scaled down. Look at the size of it here. This is not a tiny, cheap, uh, whatever they call it, discount store furniture. This is the real deal. This is something, when you purchase it, $9.99 sofa and love, pillows come with it, and when you purchase it, it you, can, you got something to be proud of. It will last. By the way, it's got a 2.0 density foam. What that means to you as a customer, the foam in there, it has a dichron wrap, two inches around it, but the foam is hard, two inches. What we do is that we take foam, like I said, it's like ice cream, it's full of air, but they take a 2.0 density foam and they make a cushion, they bake it. Well, they can do the same cushion with a 1.0, 1.5. The difference is six months later when you got it at home, everybody has got a deal on a sofa before and you get about six months down the road, cushion flat. And that's what happens when you buy cheap furniture. This is not cheap furniture, it's just price right. Come on up here and show you some things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes when you don't have the cash on hand and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check, it's a no credit needed program. And we can get you, we can get you financed with that with a small, the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for uh, customers had to come up with is about $53 to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have 24 months same as cash. We do not have 17 years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about it. The other day I seen a commercial. Well, I heard it. I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine dollars sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, Maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. You know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you on that credit deal. We are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. All right, folks, back up here. Let's talk about sectionals. Sectionals now is a big part of our industry because people don't go as much. They're staying home, the economy's tougher, they're spending more time, they're ordering pizza in, or watching TV. We have one of the largest selections of sectionals in town. Now, we don't just have sectionals, we have these and they're manufactured by Southern Motion. Southern Motion, one of the largest manufacturers in the U.S. Now, how we sell them cheaper than the big box, which ain't very many big box get the Southern Motion, but because they're uh, more expensive than junk. But nevertheless, what we take, we get all their closeouts. We use the closeout fabric, fully warranted. We use all their mechanisms, leg it and plait, and then we put these fabrics, we pick the ones we want, we save thousands of dollars. This sectional right here could very easily be $4,200. Look at it. Got a power. I'll show you right here. Reclining power. Here, here, two others over here. So you got four recliners. Console here. We sell it for $1,799, this sectional. Uh, over here, all over leather sectional. And I'm not going to get any great detail about them because they won't be here but just a few days anyway, and then we'll have some more in just like it. But nevertheless, this is one that we got at the market. It was a closeout all over genuine leather. And we don't usually deal in leather. We deal in Duralux. I'll show you what Duralux is here. Duralux is a man-made fabric. It's a polyurethane. It feels like leather, but it is not leather match or anything like this. Over here, this is the real, the cow paid the price for this one. It's the real deal, genuine leather. We won't have many of them. This one was $6,000. We sell it for $2,900. That's if you just got to have the real deal. And I don't, you know, everyone likes that now and then. Come on over into this department. 
Those are the motion sectionals. These are stationary sectionals. If I'm not mistaken, we have 22 sectionals on this floor at any given time. So, sofa love, sectionals, dining room, recliners, we got the works. And if you like something a little more flashy, turn around and look at this. Let me show you. Check that out. Red, green, blue, whatever color that is. Just a little trinket there to go along. But a lot of the youngsters seem to like that. Bedroom suits. All right, we buy our bedroom suits from a company out of Dallas, Texas. It's called Elements. These bedrooms, we buy them by containers and truckloads and closeouts. Now, if it's not a container, if it's not a, we don't we don't order just one. We have to order a truck to get a real deal. But with everything as slow as it is these days in the industry and many other industries, when you buy that many at one time, you can get a deal on them. Trust me. We got this group, King Bed, Dresser Mirror, The Works, $13.99, $13.29, excuse me. This is real furniture. Notice the height of this furniture. We're not talking about kid furniture here. We're talking about the real deal here. Velvet lined drawers. Look here. You can open that drawer with one hand, put your furniture, your clothes in it with the other hand, and it not hang up on you. Come on around here. I want to show you something. Here's a bed here we bought. We got a, let's see, I don't know, I think we got 14 of these. These are Pulaski beds. They sold for $3,600. It's what this bed sold for originally. There's a closeout. $978 is our price, as long as we got them. And I'm going back up through here. Now, real furniture. Check this. The height and the size. Antique height. Velvet line, English dovetail, steel ball bearing glides. What that means to you as a customer, watch this. You can open it with one hand and shut it with one hand. So, I mean, this is real stuff. It's not, I know you can buy bedroom suits cheaper than $12.79, but you can't buy these. You can't buy nothing like this. You can buy a press board, something to last you two years or something, but you won't get wood like we have. Come on back. We've got all different styles. I'll make sure that we have different for different age groups. If someone wants a different style, we got it. Contemporary. Again, take a look at the height of this chest. Hey, this is not children's furniture. Look at this thing. This chest must be five feet tall. See, it's a real deal. All right, let's see what the price on. Fourteen seventy-nine for the complete group. Hey, by the way, speaking of complete group, you ever heard of a five-piece group where it's a headboard? Footboard, rails, dresser, and a mirror. A five-piece group to us is the bed, dresser, mirror, chest, and a nightstand. Actually, it's a four-piece group. I should come up with something else to make it five, but we don't need to because that's everything it takes. Now, here's a group like here. A little bit different, but look at the, see, even though, see how those drawers glide like that see how easy they do hey that's serious business and, and nowadays folks come in and they're so concerned about the price they don't take a few moments to say you know what that's pretty good quality but they'll wish they had in about six months look at this group here for instance this is a living room suit with nail heads now these are individually they have to hire somebody to put that nail in there each one of them nail heads that's not a strip of tin that you tack on here and tack on over there and it falls off and rolls up six months later sofa and love seat on this one with the pillows 9.99 it don't get any better than that it's real furniture come on back here we've got a recliner department right back here but I want to show you something we got in the other day these recliners big man recliners look at this three position chase recliner and it's not a little recliner fully warranted 349 now this thing will sell for six hundred dollars anywhere 349 at Tupelo Ron's best mattress and more got it come on over here We'll show you something. Our sofa sets are fully lined. See this, see this cushion? It's lined on both sides. Now, that may not 
mean much to you now, but it'll mean something to you in about a year or two when one side starts looking a little worn. You can just flip that cushion over and get more life out of them as opposed to a cheap product that half of the, this side's covered and the other side's paper. You know what I'm talking about. Come on up. We use a company here called Fusion. They're part of the BFI, Broy Hill Furniture Industries. Fusion is one of their sister companies. Broy Hill, I don't even think, is in business anymore. Now, they, they went out of business, but their name will still be around. I'm sure they'll pick it up in China or something and use it. But it won't be the Broy Hill that your mother and dad knew years ago. But this is Fusion. Pillows, fabric, these fabrics are $30 a yard on these pillows. This group right here, Sofa and Love, should be 16-something, $10.99 every day. Every day. And if you're looking for something for maybe the first time out of the gate, apartment or something, you're looking at $6.99, Sofa Love. Sofa and Love, $6.99. And don't worry about it if we have this one, because we don't. We'll have another one like it. Another one of the fusion groups here. Ten ninety nine. Look at this. Real furniture. Not scaled down. Big furniture. See that with the pillows. Folks, I wanted to bring you back up here and bring your attention to the quality of these sectionals. Uh, there are some different things, too. We have next day delivery. I don't care what time of the day you get in here. You don't have to wait two weeks for the merchandise. If they special order it two months for the merchandise, we're going to bring it to you the next day at... If you're 30 miles in any direction from here, we go to Hurley, Mississippi at no charge, however far that is. I think it's about 30 miles. Uh, we go out here to Tillman's Corner. We go to Sarah Land. We go all of these places, no charge. All right. And I want to tell you a little bit about this. Since they come out with the Duralux, I know a lot of folks have had some real problems, including us, with what they call bonded leather. Well, what happened on bonded leather is this. They tested it. They have what's called a 30,000 rub test. It's a machine. They take that leather and they do this. They say 30,000 times. I don't know if they do or not. They may just do it 10,000, but still a lot of times. But <clears throat> what they didn't consider is that the chemicals on, in our body when we perspire, in our hair, the clones that we wear, it separated the leather from the cloth that was bonded. So now they've come out with a thing called, some people call it Duralux, Durapella. But anyway, what it really is, it's a man-made material, like a microfiber, and it's on, put on to top of a cloth. It actually breathes. That way it doesn't peel, because that bonded leather was a nightmare, believe me. Can, I, I can imagine paying three or $4,000 for a product, three years later, it's peeling off. I mean, that's terrible. It's a terrible thing for the industry to do to us, to do to you. But they've tried to correct it, so we're past all of that. But one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention is the quick delivery, the no charge, and when you come in uh, and you have a problem, if you do have a problem and you're in one of these big chain stores, you come back in and you find your salesperson say, look, I got a problem. This arm come loose or whatever. Well, I, I can't help you. I'm a salesman. That's all I do. Well, who, who do I, I need to speak to your manager. Well, okay, yeah, we can take care of that. I'll turn that over to customer service over in Atlanta, Georgia somewhere, and they'll get back with you. But when you come in here, the salesperson will pick up the phone. They're going to call the manufacturer and say, look, we got a problem. Right arm facing is stitches come loose. I need to order that. I need to get it on order. Okay, and then as soon as it comes in, it usually takes about a week for, for the cuts to come in like that. Then we take it. We've got a guy here locally that not only works for us, works for other furniture stores. He'll come out and replace it. So you're talking to somebody that can get the job done. The only thing, problem we've had is to get the message out. That's why we're going to start doing these 30-minute commercials like this, info commercials. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More at 7150 Airport Boulevard. It used to be Tupelo Furniture. Outlet, Tupelo Furniture Outlet. So it's Tupelo Ron's, Tupelo Furniture, however you want to say it. 7150 Airport Boulevard. We're handling the bedding. We're handling the furniture. And we are in a position now to make the prices better than ever. Had a lady in here today, in here today, that had been in some of the big chain stores. She said, your prices are great. She bought a bedroom suit. Said, I can't believe it. I said, you can believe it. There is one catch. 
you got to buy the one you see because I may not have another one like it. But we get them in all the time because we're always doing these closeout things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes when you don't have the cash on hand and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check. It's a no credit needed program. And we can get you we can get you financed with that with a small the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the customers had to come up with is about fifty three dollars to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have twenty four months same as cash. We do not have seventeen years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about. I, the other day I seen a commercial. Well, I heard it, I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, made and buy that sofa. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months, same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you, on that credit deal, we are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. Folks, I just thought of something. Let's talk about how to get you here. We're just, what, one mile east of Schillinger, about two blocks west of Cody on the right-hand side. You can't miss us. UJ Chevrolet. Right up here on the left, Ford Place, right up here on the left. We're in the heart of Dixie here, Mobile, Alabama. So 7150 Airport Boulevard. We are open from 9 in the morning till 7 at night every day except Sunday. We're closed on Sunday right now. We're trying to have a little more family life. We used to be open Sunday too, but that's, that's too much for us. There's not that many of us here. We're keeping our overhead down. That's another thing too, one of the reasons why we can sell cheap. There's not but five of us here. Me and two others in sales, and I work every day here, and then we got two delivery guys. And we do work and we don't mind. We, it's a privilege to get to work. Or I feel like it, I don't know how they feel. I think they do. But nevertheless, we're here at 7150 Airport Boulevard, Come on in and see us. I guarantee you we will do our best to earn your business. I am not kidding you. We're going to get you the deal. We're going to get it delivered fast. And if you do have a problem, we're going to take it personal, and we're going to fix it for you at Tupelo Furniture. Best mattress and more. Got to add that in there. I forget about these mattress people. You know, they want their little click. <laughs> we need them, though. Tupelo Furniture's best mattress and more, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them. Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello, folks. Tupelo Ron here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tupelo Furniture, best mattress and more, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now, we're having 60% off of our Sealy Posturepedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our Southern Motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's it. Tupelo Ron's, best mattress and more, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652.
Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. Welcome to a Taking the Kingdom Special Moments broadcast. This broadcast is in honor of Prophet Blake's and Lady Lois's 44 years of dedicated service to the Kingdom of God. Now, let's go into the sanctuary. Tonight, I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight from uh, the subject, Angry Hot temper. <laughs> How to control it. Angry. Um, there's so many people that are out of control. They have no control over their temper. Number one, when one allows himself to become angry, he's really out of control. Now all anger is not in itself sinful. There are times when God is angry. <laughs> times that when he is angry. Angry is, um, is a mental unbalance. Temporarily insane unless that you are in control but the average person who gets angry or out of control and you must as Christians we are human beings and there are times that we get angry. But then you know how to control it. Now you control anger by not trusting yourself. That time when you get angry, it's best to go and allow yourself to regather itself. Don't say what you want to say. That's when you're angry, it's always wrong. Something happened when you get angry. Your choice of words changes. You'll say some things that you surprise yourself. Huh? Somebody looking down now and says, Lord, I'm angry right now. <laughs> I, I'm, I want to write a book on this. Keeping yourselves within control. 
see what happens when you get angry you always want to use your mouth and my grandmother said nothing hates a duck but his beard If I keep my mouth, you will never know what's on the inside. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Angry, hot tempered. You got to make sure that there are times that you need to pray before speaking. Somebody say, think twice before speaking one. Don't speak too fast. And there are some of you all have no control over your mind. You're ready for anything come up at any time. You're saying, start it and I'll beat you keeping it up. But you cannot do that as children of God. For one thing, a child of God must always manifest that I'm in control. God Almighty. Look at, look at Psalm number 7 and verse 11. Psalm number 7 and verse 11. All right, baby. Y'all see that? You do see that. That's why I tell you, it's not always sinful to be angry. God judges the what? The righteous. Wait a minute. Wait just one second. Let me just get this page and hold it down. God judges the righteous and God is what? Anger with what? The wicked, the wicked win. Every, Every day. Every day. Talk about me. Weak becomes sorrowful. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And the weak, the weakhead become braggadocio. Yes, sir. The wicked act as though that God does not exist. That's right. That's it. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. So God is angry with the wicked. Yes, yes. The wicked will be destroyed. Yes. yes. But the weak will be strengthened. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Angry, see. A lot of people uh, wait until they get angry to tell you what's on their mind. Been wanting to tell you that a long time. But I had to wait until I got angry to do it because see, you can't hold me responsible because after all I was angry. Are y'all understand? Temporarily insane. You know, a lot of people get drunk to do that. Been wanting to tell you. But I had to hide, have something to hide down. Have I got a witness to see? I didn't mean to say that, but you made me angry. I really didn't mean to say that, but you made me angry. See, you're never supposed to lose control. Even when you're angry. Because anger is a test of strength. It is to show you how strong you are. 
Do I have a witness yet? How can I control myself under a spell of anger? How can I control? Can I maintain my Christian calmness? I'm angry now, but can I maintain? Now, sometimes maintaining it is to give yourself a walk. If walking will keep you in control, then go on and walk. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you need period to cool off, God taught you how to do that. When Adam let him down, he waited until it cooled. Waited until he calmed down. And then came down. Because if he had came down in the heat of the day, uh, that would have been destruction. But when it came down, when it cooled down, when it cooled off, he came down. That he might drop a ladder for man to go up. Thank the Lord. I don't believe y'all hear what I am saying. Learning how to control. Learn how to not say everything come up. Some people say, well, you know, whatever comes up, comes out. You're a foolish, you're a foolish person. You may not let everything come out, comes up. There are a whole lot of things that comes is in, but not come out of there. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah to Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Why? Because if it came out, I would reflect upon my Christian relationship. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. There are some things that comes to my mind that I better not allow come out. You better hear what I'm saying to you. Y'all don't mind me talking. All right, all right, right. We're going to talk then since you want me to talk. So, learning how to do that. Many things, many jobs have been lost because we, get, we wasn't able to keep our mind. And because we weren't able to keep our mouths, we have never been able to replace the quality of job sense. Yes. Learning how to control anger. Learn how to do that. Learn how. See, it's bad when you don't have no self-control. Hmm. Learning to have self control. Many women have lost good husbands. Because somebody said, don't take that. Had no control over thy anger. So he made her angry. And she lost the best man in the world. But she only realized that after she realized that she lost it. See. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Angry destroys. And it will destroy you. The first thing it does, it destroys the quality that are on the inside of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> See? And when you lose that inability, you have no control on that out ability. <laughs> See, because it's not so much of anger 
as it is what it causes. It will cause depression. It will cause low self-esteem. Yes, 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 it will. Yes, sir. Because it will call you to stoop lower yeah. than what you are. Yeah. Somebody, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, he made me angry. And you wind up saying, he made me angry. But you see, you, 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 you can't live with anger. So you ought to do something that you can live with. Yes, sir. There you go. Don't allow a temporary thing to mess you up for life. Hallelujah. Amen. So my temporary feeling has messed me up for my whole lifetime. Learning to be in control. Learning to be God became angry with the wicked. And you got to understand that, see. Because a fella is weak doesn't mean he's a weekend. Peter was wicked, weak enough to deny him. But he became one of the greatest apostles. Some other shout out to me. That's why he said, the weak in me just say you're strong. He said, let the weak say. And the reason why he said that, baby, is because what you say is what you get. If you say I'm weak, you get weaker. So you're giving the devil something to work with. But if you say you're strong, even though you're weak, you got something to pull up by. Somebody, 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 somebody. God was, uh, look at the uh, first king chapter uh, 11 and verse 9. Look at first king chapter 11 verse 9. Uh, Y'all don't mind me just talking a little bit. Uh, I want to get your permission. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Look at the 11th chapter and the 9th verse. 11 chapter 9. Y'all got it? Yeah. Boy, y'all something. I tell you. Just makes me feel good to see y'all just able to find those pages just like that. Just find them just like that. 11 and 9. Do y'all see that? Yes, All righty. What did it say? And the Lord was angry with Solomon. God was angry with him. Because his what? Hard was turned from the Lord, God of Israel. Watch your heart. Watch your heart. See, you're in church, but where? Where is your heart? You're singing, you're shouting, but where is your heart? Hard had turned. And that strange thing about a man when he turned, when he leaves God, he always turned from. So one never get weak turning toward God. He always get weak turning away from. So God was angry with him. And you know why God was angry? It because he had invested so much in Solomon. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. To see the wisest king that God had ever given 
to become the biggest fool the world have ever known. Some other to shout at me. What happened to Solomon? What happened to Solomon? Number one, Solomon got him a woman from every ethnic, every background that were. This is why he ran a peaceable kingdom. Because when a nation rose up to fight him, he said, remember, I got your children. Your Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> remember, I'm married to your daughters. But when he made the mistake, it wasn't the women that he had. Not that God endorses that. But it wasn't the women. The thing that defiled him, he brought all of those strange gods in Israel. And started worshiping those idols. God better come on here and shout hallelujah. Y'all don't mind me talking. So the Lord said, I'm angry with you, man. Look what he says. I am going to do it. Hmm. The Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord and the God of Israel, which had what appeared unto him twice. He went to him twice. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. He was disobedient. He refused to keep what God commanded. And one thing about God, he'll give you something, he'll take it away from you. Wherefore the Lord said, unto Solomon for as much as this is done of thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my stature which I have commanded thee I will surely rend mean take it away from you the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant yes, yes. I'm going to take you down from being a king to a servant and I'm going to take a servant and bring him unto king Y'all not going to pray with me, are you? <laughs> yes, Lord. My God. See, so don't take God long to pull you down and put somebody else up there. No, sir. Not long at all. It don't take long. Because you would not obey. Because you refuse to listen to me. I'm going to take the privilege of the way from you. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to take your king's seat. Uh -huh. And I'm going to set one of your servants in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's humiliating, boy. Yeah. For God to take your subject and put him over you. That's right. But he would not listen. He would not obey. And it angered God. Somebody ought to shout out and leave. And somebody said, it's bad to fall in the hands of an angry God. It's awful to fall in the hands of an angry God. See, the more given, the more required. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. If God has given you more, Amen. he's expecting more. Look at Pastor now. See, this is what you have to watch. There's a spirit in anger. And if you don't take control of it, 
it will ultimately destroy you. You're not going to pray with me, are you? Now, a lot of children are born with this spirit. Because during the whole pregnancy, that mother was staying angry. Man, I'm so glad I wish some of y'all didn't give birth to me to crying in a shame. I said, Ooh, Lord. You know, your personality trickles down in your child. You nasty and hateful. That child's gonna come here nasty and hateful. And you wonder why he get that from me? He got it from you. If you have a nice, kind disposition while carrying that child, that's why you need to be prayerful. Some of those shout hallelujah. You need to be prayerful so God can shape your attitude. Join the New Home family of churches along with the prophets, sons, and daughters from around the world in a celebration to remember as we honor Prophet Blakes and Lady Lois for 44 years of dedicated service to the kingdom. Starting Thursday, June 4th, a night of reflection with Pastor Robert C. Blakes Jr. and musical guest Nicole Slack-Jones. A night of praise with our musical guests the Rocks of Harmony and the New Home Mass Choir. Morning Glory, Sunday with Pastor Samuel R. Blakes. And the culminating spotlight, A Night of Honor, Sunday evening with Pastor Dale Sanders. Mark your calendars for June 4th through the 7th, 2009 in New Orleans. Share in this glorious event as we honor God's prophet for his years of commitment to building the lives of others. Plan to be there for this 44th year celebration. For additional information, call the Media Center at 1-800-633-4274. Local callers, call the Prayer Center at 504-569-8206. Don't forget to attend the Day of Gratitude, Miracle Service, and a luncheon with the Prophet and First Lady in the beautiful Upper Room. Tickets are $30 per person. Saturday, June 6th at 9 a.m. immediately after the Miracle Service. Covenant Partners and Friends in Ministry, thank Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Today's broadcast is available on CD or DVD. Order your copy today. Remember to ask about the Prophet's new catalog or log on to ProphetBlakes.com. Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Robert C. Blake Senior Prayer Center. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners if they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blakes. Also enjoy your personalized frame photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blakes to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher.
Welcome to this week's edition of From the Pastor Study. Of course, I am Dr. Henry Roberts, your host and founding pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. I'm excited. Uh, all this week we've been celebrating uh, the 23 years of our church anniversary and, and monumental occasion, and I am so blessed uh, this week to have a, a group of pastors from throughout the Gulf Coast and, and locally to come and share in this meeting. And many of them are a part of our international fellowship. We call it the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. And I am so pleased to have each and every one of these men of God here today to share with us on From the Pastor Study. I'm going to do this and let them introduce themselves to you uh, following from my, uh, my immediate right hand all the way over to that next corner. God bless you, Pastor. Great to have you. Won't you tell people your name, who you are, and what's the name of your church, and where you're from? Yes, uh, my name is Jermaine Gatson. I'm the pastor of Faith Ministries, which is located in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, in the Homewood area. And we're just there ministering to the word of, ministering to the people, the word of God, the word of faith. And uh, we're just excited to be on the broadcast today. Amen. God bless you. I am uh, Bishop Dr. Henry Williams from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I am the proud pastor of the House of the Lord, Spirit of Life Ministry. And uh, we are just about trying to build families, build relationships, and uh, to empower people so that they may become what God has called them to be from the teaching of God's Word. Yes, I am, I am a pastor found the Resurrection Temple House of Prayer. I'm also supposed to be locked out of Tampa, Florida. Our mission in Tampa and all over the world is to seek out and say that which is lost to any means necessary minister to the whole man, and in Jesus' name, do it so. Hello, my name is uh, Bishop Lynn Morrison, Jr. from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm the founding pastor of Word of Faith Christian Church, and the assignment from God is to teach his people faith. Amen. Amen. I am Pastor Harry Thomas from Fresh from Heaven Ministries in Baton Rouge, Louisiana where we are transforming spectators into participators in the kingdom of God. Our assignment is to teach the principles of God's word that can be lived out in everyday life. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., and I'm the founding pastor of Rightly Dividing the Word Church of God, located here in the beautiful city of Mobile, Alabama, where we are building a people of power, purpose, and praise. Hey, Amen. I, I invited these brothers here just to share a little bit about whatever God may be doing on their hearts and, and individual in their ministries in particular and, and how your walk with God has really been a blessing in your life. I don't know where to start, uh, but it, it, it just I, I guess I'll just start in the middle. Apostle uh, Lockett, won't you share with us uh, some of what God is doing in your life and, and the main focus and thrust of your ministry? God is doing some amazing things in my life. He's doing some amazing things in our ministry. Uh, he reached down and, and picked me up. I remember clear, put my feet on solid ground. And in doing so, he taught me to do that, the same thing for other men. We, we've been extensively in the prison ministry, jail ministry, sidewalk Sunday school services. And, and just outreach, we're, we're doing a, a, a mighty work in outreach. We're in the neighborhood, everywhere we need to be, everywhere where their crime is, we try to be there. Everywhere where there's confusion. We try to be that. We do all that we can in Jesus' name. We totally in. We're not just halfway in. We're not trying to fight the enemy from outside of the rain. We are interested in getting in the rain, being the front line runner for the Lord. And he's done some amazing things. I, I saw him turn people's lives around from the prison system. I, I saw him reach out to young children and bring them up and turn their lives around and just minister to them to, to create ministry among our young people that one can go and tell another one about Christ. They, they can mentor one another. They seem to look out for one another extremely well. Big brothers seem to look out for little brothers, little sisters. We try to fill them up so they can go feel somebody else up. You know, and I, I believe that's what God has assigned us. Now, now, how many years? I heard you mention you've going into prisons. How many years you've been going in that prison? We, we've been going into prison right at about 20 years now. Wow. 20 years. Great. So a lot of times, when, when sometimes the guys get out of prison, do they come look for you and, and come to make sure, to, to let you know what, what a blessing you've been to them in their lives? 
many, many times they do, uh, not necessarily always, because our main focus is not uh, building ourselves up. Our, our main focus is to build Christ up. So I, I'm satisfied wherever they go, as long as they stay in Christ. As long as they stay in Christ, because they've got to be connected to the source. They've got to be connected to the power. If they're not connected to the vine, and there's no sap running through them, then I know eventually they're going to be right back where they came yeah. from, put on the foot of me. Yeah. But as long as they're connected, they're going to be steady growing and multiplying. And that's what I miss you. Pastor Kaiser, won't you share with us some of the things God and the insight God's been giving you and what he's been doing over there in, in South Alabama, or South Mobile South County Mobile down there? South Mobile, Alabama, amen. Well, listen, I really believe that God is moving. In fact, he is uh, in an awesome way of in our church and, and in that local community uh, there, amen. We do things such as, you know, prayer walks uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, we go to those various uh, apartment complexes that are in that particular area and, and saw God move. We sent teams in there two by two. And in fact, we would pair a, a prophet with an evangelist and they would go and they would knock on doors. And we've seen people save. Uh, I can remember one account where they went in, the team went in, knocked on the door and there was a young man in there just about to commit suicide. Come on, man. Yeah, had a, had a pistol ready to do it at wow. that particular time. And they was able to counsel that young man and minister to him, you know, get them delivered, uh, get them saved, you know, and uh, in, in the family of God, you know. And so, of course, in our personal ministry, you know, God is moving. Uh, <coughs> uh, the people there are being blessed, they're being taught the principles of God that, that lead to success. You know, I tell people a lot of times, you got to know what to do in order to be successful in this life, and that's both spiritually uh, and naturally. And so we are, we're doing that, I believe, in an effective way by the grace of God. Uh, Pastor Gasser, you know, yes, you're a young minister. Uh, uh, how old is your church, man? And, and tell us about, you know, what God's doing. Well, our church is about uh, five years old. We started in 2010, and uh, we're in the place right now where I believe we're just really uh, just getting started. For several years, uh, we were in the uh, West End area of Birmingham, Alabama, and we did various outreaches while we were there. We uh, ministered to the homeless. We did uh, back-to-school uh, giveaways. Uh, we did uh, giveaways where we uh, did outreach for uh, newlywed mothers, where we gave out uh, pampers and diapers, and we did all kind of outreach uh, for a short period of time, or of course of a few years. Uh, but then maybe a couple of years ago, God kind of redirected our focus from uh, not just doing outreach, but also doing spiritual warfare. Mm. And uh, God blessed uh, me last year to be able to write a book on uh, spiritual warfare. It's called Tactics, Trends, and Traits of the Enemy, uh, Equipping the Believer to Fight Back. And, uh, of course, you can find that on my website, JermaineGatson.com, and also on our, our church website, FaithMinistriesInc.org. Uh, but last year... God blessed us to move to uh, the Vulcan Parking Museum, wow. where the statue of Vulcan is that oversees uh, the city of Birmingham. Mm. And of course, you know, some people were kind of iffy about that. Why would you move, you know, your church uh, to that particular because location? Because got to come down. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we kind of lost a few people when we changed direction, but, but God kind of really focused our ministry on what he called us to do. And so we spent the last year and a half on top of the mountain where the uh, Vulcan statue was praying and interceding uh, for the city of Birmingham. And actually, uh, this month, God actually blessed us with a new building uh, in the Homewood area of Birmingham. And so we're, we're right there in Homewood right now, and uh, we're working on the building. So we're getting ready to have a, a dedication in a, a couple of months. Bishop Roberts is going to come and do our dedication for us when he can get, in his, get his schedule Amen. clear. And uh, so we're just excited about what God is doing. We're in a new season. Uh, we just believe God is moving in a new way, and we're just excited about it. Pastor Harry Thomas, yeah. tell us what's shaking in Baton Rouge. We're going to turn you loose in a minute, yeah. bitch. We're about to see you ready to go. Yeah. Loose that man, let him go. Come on, Pastor Thomas. Tell him. I seen yeah. him biting at the jump, so I had to jump the other way. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are, we are just seeing God do some tremendous, tremendous things. We've um, kind of lately focused on Generation X. I think the enemy is focused on that 23 to 35 year old age group. 
Yes. And uh, the college. You might need kids. to back that thing yeah. down to 18. Yeah, we can go back to 18. Yeah. We're seeing some of those too, the 18, yeah. 15. Uh, we're, we're really uh, having moves of God in our services where they are actually encountering the tangible presence of God, the prophetic apostolic presence of God. Uh, people are being healed, being delivered. All manner of diseases are being healed. Uh, our Sunday services are basically revival services. I mean, kids are running to the church. I can't wait to get to church. We've talked to some of the parents of some of these Generation Xs that are my age or a little younger, and uh, they say they've never heard their kids excited about church before. And they're, they're calling their college friends. They're calling their business friends. And uh, our main goal is to cause them or teach them how to impact their sphere of life, their marketplace ministry, their families. Uh, we're seeing uh, their family members getting saved. Uh, we're seeing their coworkers getting saved. Uh, in the process of all of this, we're seeing them get promoted. Prosperity is coming My into Lord. their lives. Um, God is just being who he said he would be. Uh, you know, his kingdom is being manifest in their lives. And we're doing outreaches in the uh, neighborhoods, uh, going into apartment complexes, taking uh, trailers uh, with hot dogs and uh, free drinks. And right. we call it a prayer outreach. And we'll give them hot dogs, free drinks, and ask them if anybody needs prayer. And uh, we've had great turnouts with people coming out for prayer and, and getting healed and getting delivered. And uh, it's just been a great time in the Lord. And we're seeing this happen on a regular basis. On a regular yeah. basis. On a regular amen. basis. Pa pa uh, Bishop Williams, amen. tell us about how the Lord burning up Hattiesburg over here. Amen. God bless you. He's, uh, he's doing a mighty work. And uh, we're just so pleased that God chose us. Um, amen. That uh, he would use us. I want to say to this pastor to be encouraged. Uh, one of the things that the word said, uh, you didn't lose nobody that he gave. So Amen. for those that you lost, you know, yeah. they want you yours anyway. So I <laughs> want to encourage That's you. That's good. Let me tell you one of the things that we are doing. We, we're doing, um, if I may, um, uh, a few things in uh, Hattiesburg. And we are equipping, encouraging, and um, uh, getting people ready um, to... Um, um, to go into this world. I, I think when we look now um, in a lot of areas, and I know particularly in Hattiesburg, uh, we have in our church now, uh, we have grandmothers that are 30 years old. Um, that, Just that, the that truth. may not mean anything, but it does to us in yes. terms of what we see. Because when we start looking at the grandmother being 30, this is a general statement. Yes. Um, I know in our Pacific area, but when we look at a 30-year-old grandmother and children that she's raising and uh, have never had God, because most of them that we evangelize, uh, we find that they have not had God, and not only just the mothers or the grandmothers, but the mothers as well that have never been to church, then uh, it becomes, uh, we understand that the work that God has given us in order to teach them, first of all, who God is. Uh, and that's first, and that's paramount to us in terms of the work that he has assigned us. And then when, he, uh, when we work with our people and bringing them to Christ, for them to accept Christ, we then go into a program that we have to, uh, to equip and, and to encourage them and to make sure that they are ready to go out into the world we then concentrate on building families yes. and working together in building relationships. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into this area, that's when we begin to equip them. There are many things that we are doing. We're teaching them uh, how to run homes, how to have Christ in your homes, and how that works together. Parenting skills. Parenting yes. skills wow. uh, yes. that we are working with them and how to manage money, yes. how to do yes. things like that so that it become worthwhile to them because you can bring them into church and give them Christ, but if they don't have anything when they leave, then, uh, then you're not going to have them that long. So we have to teach them. Uh, that's the only way that they are going to be empowered is that they need to be taught. And so we have taken on the responsibility from the Lord that we would build these families and then we would teach them how to uh, build relationships. So I don't want to cut you off. 24, 25 years ago, people told me, 
people wouldn't be showing up to hear nobody just teach yeah. the word. <laughs> and, and that's right. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm we, still here 23 years later. That's man. exactly right. And I've been at it a little while myself now. So you better get you a hoop because yeah. ain't nobody coming over there to hear no, that. And, uh, and they don't want the hoop from me. That's right. Uh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. for the younger guys. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I'm going to teach them. Yes. yes. And, uh, and then that way they'll, uh, they'll understand. I don't have anything to, against the uh, the yes, sir. I'm all for it. I'm just yeah. saying what, what I was told. Yeah. You meant, mentioned that how in, the importance yes. of teaching. Yes. I, I've always understood that teaching, it imparts. And that's yeah. right. See, preaching will inspire you. That's right. But that teaching is going to carry me. It's going to give me my how-to and, and the practical application that I need. So it's not like you said, I leave right. with something. Go ahead. Yes. I didn't mean well, to cut well, you off. And, and, but I like that because, you know, one of the things that we're teaching them is you don't live up here. Yeah. You live down here. Yes, sir. <laughs> so when you get down here, then we need to put something in you yes. so that you'll know how to maintain. Yes. And so that's the, that's the area that we're working with. And not only do we have that with our, uh, with our members in the church, but we also have an adult daycare mm -hmm. uh, where we take in seniors that are 60 years and older. And uh, we work with them in order to, first of all, teach them about uh, Christ, to give them a better quality of life. Um, to teach them about exercising, um, mentally uh, keep them prepared uh, so that they don't lose. Because, you know, if you don't uh, use that mind and keep that mind busy, then you'll lose it. You know, the old adage is, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In many aspects, yes, sir. You know, Amen. So, but uh, that's just a general idea of some of the things that we are doing in the house. Man, that sounds Man. exciting. Uh, Dr. Morrison, I know you've been through different transitions, and, and you have an awesome testimony. Uh, would just share with us what, what in this, this season that you're in, what, what do you see God doing down in Baton Rouge or on that side of town where you work? All right, I see God training up the believers to really know how to apply his word in their life and teach their children and them how to apply it. A lot of people I found out in the body of Christ, they can quote a lot of scriptures but to apply it in their personal life where it's going to change things. Yes. A lot of them don't know it, but they love God. I know a lot of people love God, but they don't have the knowledge of the how-to. So that's mainly uh, what I focus on, teaching them how to apply uh, the Word of God, with faith coming and how to release their faith. Yes. And how to trust God uh, regardless of, of how things look, how to learn how to walk by faith, not by sight. So regardless of how bad the situation is that the doctor say, trust the word of God, and he'll bring you through. Amen. And, uh, Amen. Like you see, I've been through some challenges with the liver transplant. I had a lot of natural problems. My body would swell. I would itch in the pulpit. I had to hurry up and get out, and go home and get out of all my clothes. But through all of that, God brought me. I just stuck to the word. Yes, sir. He took God. my infirmity and bad yes, my sir. sickness. Yes. And uh, so I can live a long, healthy life. And I apply the word, and I'm still here, thanks be to God. Seven years. Seven years. And uh -huh. then, uh, 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 Dr. Robinson, when I first, when you had me down here, you had me minister here, knowing I was sick and everything. But you called me in and allowed me to minister. I'll never forget it. And uh, it just helped me so much. So I'm sharing with you, just trust God. You know the word. Yes. You got to learn the word. Yes. You can't be guessing and hoping. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, amen. You got to yes. Know. Right. If yes. you know what God says and you release your faith in God, not based on your emotions or your feelings, and you can hurt pretty bad sometimes. I want you to know pain mm -hmm. will make you give it up and go home. Yeah, add a little something to that. I want to say that um, we too are a um, faith church. We, we believe in faith. We yes. teach faith. Amen. And, um, God said that uh, without uh, faith, it's impossible to please him. Yes, sir. Uh, amen. I, I said God said, you know what I mean. Um, I had cancer, and uh, uh, my church went through that with me. Wow. We yeah. prayed through it. And one of the things that happened, Dr. Roberts, uh, it was when I was in transition of going through what faith was really, really all about. Yeah. And the way God used that was as I was teaching the church about faith and I told them that I had been at that time a pastor, a pastor for 30 years, but had never really just sunk in on what the word was saying about faith and how important it is. 
um, that if we are going to be what God wants us to be, how we must learn by faith. Yes, uh, and God gave me the inspiration uh, that I would teach them through, you don't have to see it to believe it, you have to believe to see it. Yes, sir. And one of the things that he showed me uh, was that uh, I'm going to take you through this and, uh, and I'm going to show you if you trust me and believe in me, then you're going to make it through. And in the process of going through that, my appendix burst. Jeez. And when my appendix burst, uh, uh, I was all up in the air and didn't know where to go. And, and, and when I was laying in the hospital bed, uh, the spirit came to me and said, I'm going to show you if you trust me enough, just how much I am because of the faith that you're having. And at the same time, across town, a young guy about 23 years old, the same thing happened to him, but he died. Yeah. Are, are you, you seeing what yes, God said? Like I was you? saying last night, it's a yes. grace. It's a certain grace on yes. you. That's right. yes. and, and what will kill somebody uh -huh. else when grace rests on your life, That's right. it, 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 it won't all affect you. Amen. 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 Yeah. God bless you. You're exactly right. And so he taught me through that ordeal and brought me out and my my church start going with us as we begin really to intensify on teaching on faith and what God was really doing and how real he really was and is in our lives. I just want to share that. Yes, when you say that about that liver, because when you said that, I knew that was life. Amen. God, no matter. That filtering just takes place. And if you don't have it, you ain't going to be here long. No, oh, but God. Pastor Scott, if you had to say one thing you hear God say in this season, in, in this time, what would that one thing be? Okay, he was saying to me that uh, along the lines of the message that you taught last night, basically, and you said that you didn't give it a, uh, a title, and so I kind of, you know, piggybacked off of it and gave it one. Yes, I said well, uh, abiding, in the, uh, uh, abiding in the grace of the Lord. Right, and uh, basically you talked about it, you wind up talking about the power of the seed. Yes, sir. And how important it is for the church to learn how to function uh, in that principle. And God was telling me some time ago that, that I personally believe that that's going to be an end-time word. Jesus. That's one of the ways that the wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred into yeah. the hands of the righteous is when the church, the Bible Christ at large, learned the power of sowing, mm. the power of reaping. You know, uh, God even told me that, you know, even for us who have ministries, you know, you can't even fulfill purpose unless you sow. Yeah. My, my, my. Well, that's true. A lot of times, and I don't mean to cut you off, stay in that same vein, but a lot of times pastors have what I call a dead sea ministry. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But we'll take in. Now, now, the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because it has no outlets. Right. Therefore, can't nothing live in it. Right. Now, it takes in all the time, but whatever comes in there, it begins to deteriorate and die because right. it doesn't have Amen. a flow. Right. Um, I'm a sower. I, I don't just sow the word life. Yeah. I, I have other veins and vineyards that I right. sow uh, because I believe the principle that comes from Hebrews chapter 6, where it says the lesser is yeah. blessed of the better. So yeah. I, I believe in, in, in sowing up, as they call as you may refer to it, sowing up. And, and I, I try to teach my children and, and young ministers that, that I can influence and, and that you, you got to sow, man, where you want to yeah. go. Yeah. That's right. So if I see somebody that has a certain anointing, that Amen. walks in, in a certain posture with God or, or is in a certain place with God, and God prompts me, I know as a pastor, as a man of God, I need to release outside of myself. Yes. Yes, but sir. many times, we so busy paying bills that we don't understand finding that, that financial outlet yes. Yes, sir. is what's going to help pay, pay those bills. Yes. Please don't stop. That's I can right. remember years ago when we were trying to acquire, uh, I'm going to say just loans, to do some of the stuff that we, we, we've done. Mm -hmm. Well, at one banker told me when he saw the amount of our tithe that went away from the ministry, he said, well, what is this figure right here? Yeah. And why is this on your expense sheet? Yeah. I say, because that figure right there has everything to do with that bottom line you're looking at. Yes. Yes. Now, 
it was a revelation God personally gave me years ago. But, but when I saw that thing, he started teaching me about ministry with Dead Sea mentality. Well, all we do is take, we never give to another man of God. Yeah. We never, so because I'm already up here. Well, yeah. we, there's still a protocol and order in that word. But man, that was rich what you said. Can finish, right. finish opening that on it. Yeah, and gentlemen, me. don't stop now. You just jump on in. That's Amen. what this guy's part of. He was showing me in the book of Genesis when he created man in the first chapter. And uh, in verses uh, 27 and 28, he began to outline man's responsibility of, or his purpose was to uh, replenish the earth, to subdue, to have dominion, and so forth. And, so forth. and oversee that God. That's exactly that's right. right. And o become a horticulturalist, a husband, yeah, 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 and oversee yeah. that God. Hey, man, you about to draw me over here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want to do, draw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, but he told me, he said that Adam was not going to be able to fulfill a purpose if he wasn't willing to sow. That's the yeah. truth. He couldn't replenish. Jesus. So he, could, he, he couldn't replenish the earth if he wasn't willing uh, to sow. And God began to talk to me about how sowing is going to create a supernatural release. Uh, you know, the church that we in, you know, we sowed seed and, and one person paid the church off. Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hear people talk a lot of times that, well, ain't no one person coming and going to pay your bill. And, uh, well, it's too late for me because that's all. You've already now, experienced that. Yeah, right, because we Amen. sowed the seed. Amen. You know, I was in Bible study one night and somebody came up and gave me an envelope and said, read this at home in the presence of your wife. And when I got to the house and opened the envelope, it was a chick and then the person said, God told me to pay this bill and all. You know, Amen. so the building my, my, my. is dead free. Hallelujah. We wanted profit. Amen. You know, 4.8 acres of property. Everybody in Mobile trying to buy. God told me to sow a thousand dollars. Glory to God. Yeah. So to sow a thousand dollar seed, and we own the property right now, dead free. Yes. Amen. So, and Amen. So I believe that message, and like you said on last night, a lot of preachers are timid about preaching it because we see so much misuse out there. And we don't want to be named among them, amen. But we can't do away with the truth just because there are charlatans in, in yeah. out there. Amen. 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 And, amen. amen. And the right. people got to hear. Yes. Amen. amen. And, yes. and unless we, we, are, we are responsible for teaching the people what the Bible says. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Our job to empower. Amen. And that's a part of why he called us, why he picked us out. Amen. Exactly. That we might empower them um, so that they could become what God wants them to, to be. Exactly. Amen. Well, ain't no problem. You know, ain't no how. He, man, they need to jump in while they stand around listening. You speak on last night about sowing sparingly and, and sowing bountifully, and uh, and I know so many people. I was once like this, wanted to get to the place where I could sow a bountiful seed, so I could reap a bountiful harvest. And what God showed me in that, He said, a lot of times it takes faith to do that. He to have an ear to hear, let him hear. He said, what people a lot of times do when they get their net or their gross or whatever have you. He said, the first thing that they do is pay Peter, Paul, and Jeremiah, and right. Ezekiel, and Hezekiah. And after they done done all of that, now they're down to the part where they just have enough to sow sparingly. Amen. They never get to the point where they can sow bountifully because they don't put God first. Amen. Know? Amen. He said, but if you would put God first Amen. in that bountiful season, and it's relative, depending, you know, because, you know, $300 is going to be bountiful for somebody. Well, now, that was in the text also. I keep keep your thing of thought, because he was saying it, it's equal opportunity, but it's never equal giving. Amen. Right. Amen. So Amen. What, what he said was he counts whatever you have. Yes. And then he knows whether from the piece that you sold, whether it was your bountiful or yeah, whether it was your spare, right, because right. he knows the exact dollar amount yeah, that yeah. you you possess. Amen. So so even in that text, we saw what he said, man, I'm, I make it equal for everybody, yeah. but everybody don't have the same amount. But now, if I'm faithful, yes, sir, in that which is least, yes, yes. one day he's gonna give me more. Now I, I believe all through my ministry that see, I've always done this. Whatever, even my mama, if she was alive, my grandma could tell you, whatever I would say I'm going to do with some money, when I get the money, that's what I'm going to do with it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes preachers raise money, yes, get yeah, the money for yes, one thing, spend right. it on something yes, else. Yes, sir. God yes, sir. can't trust you with that's no right. money. Yes, sir. You Amen. was a liar and a raw. Right. Point Amen. blank. Right. So Amen. if I tell God, if he give me a thousand dollars, I'm going to take and give it to Kaiser. Well, when I get that thousand, I know it's not mine. I know right. it's a seed. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that seed is going to perpetuate to that next level. Hold your thought. Go ahead, Bishop. You know, one of the things that I always think that that you do, and I, I, I like to use the KISS principle of keeping it super, uh, stupid, uh, uh, simple stupid, and that is that if, you know, the devil will always come to you in many ways and many forms 
and most time when it comes to giving, we always find our way why we cannot give. Amen. But how do Amen. we find the word that tells us that we can give? And, and, and I just believe that it's things that you have to say out of your mouth yeah. Amen. according Amen. to what the word of God said. And Amen. once we start using his word and we start asking God, God, I can't give a hundred dollars. But show me a way. Give me a way yeah. that I can learn how to give $100. Yeah. And so if we start saying things out of our mouth according to what the, God, what the Word of God is saying, we'll find ourselves in those positions. And again, it comes back to Dr. Roberts, what you were teaching on last night. It all depends on what's in our heart. Yes. We got to have a Amen. heart to yeah. give. Amen. Man, that was so powerful because my heart now Amen. has to be connected to my giving. Amen. Amen. If Amen. it's $2 or $10 million, right. my, it has to have a connection. Right. Yes. It, it's kind of like in Romans 10. Yes. My, it's three places that word has to abide all the time. That's right. In my mouth, uh -huh. yes, I. in my heart. Mm -hmm. And in my head. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. My, if thou shalt confess thy mouth, yes. believe in thine heart. Yes. So what, where is it? It's in my mouth. It's in I got to say it. Amen. Amen. I got to say it. That's right. Amen. Then it Amen. has to be in my heart. That's right. And Amen. then it has to be in my head. It's, it's right. how I think. It's, yes. it's, see, Amen. giving then 